too, man. So what's going on with you? I see you got the whole, I see you got the whole attire on, notary department, you know, marketing all day. Big. I see you, I see you. That's what's up, man. So yeah, so I took the course. Course was pretty, pretty dope. It was, it was ex intensive for sure. Um, I learned a lot, but I'm really going to learn when I do it. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. I mean, you could take us a lot of, you know, a whole bunch of courses, but not until you do it. Exactly. It was well on YouTube. I started to interrupt the video, but I know that in this video, we we'll mentioned uh, something called the course a lot of times. And the course that we refer to is a course by Mark Wills called the Loan Signing System. Um, it's the course that I took on my journey a few years ago as a notary, and it taught me how to conduct a closing, a loan closing specifically the right way. And typically, a loan closing could um, be conducted within 30 minutes. So it teaches you how to be efficient, you how to carry yourself, teaching you how to um, perfectly execute the documents. Uh, so I will have a link to the course below and uh, the video description below. Use it to, if you are thinking about taking a course, use it to sign up for the course. Um, yes, I do get a kickback if you do use my link, and I would appreciate it if you support your boy. But that's enough about the course. Go ahead and continue watching the video. Hope that we add, added value. All right, thanks. All right, so I mean, right now, let's go. We're approaching, like you know, we're approaching the um, the slow time and slow. This might be the best time to learn too. You know, of course, yeah. So I'm gonna um, share my screen so you can kind of see. All right. And I'm gonna just take some pointers, like some things that, you know, that I need to remember. Sick. All right, so. So basically you get a, you get a, you get um a job and then you either meet them at the the attorney's office or you meet them home well it depends so like if you do if you do want to refinance uh, mm -hmm. you you meet them at their home got it but if and i'm doing like a sale like so yeah this is going to be like for example um you meet it with the buyer or buyers yes and it'll typically be at um title office or maybe like a, a, a real estate like a brokerage or real estate brokerage office okay or um, most times it could be an attorney. True. Okay. And depending on if you, when you work, depending on the situation, you will have to pick up documents from the title company because they will have like checks. Yeah. Um, or they may need you to collect a check. Well, the checks that they will have is like the real, the realtor commission checks. Got it. They'll also have like the attorney checks too. Or okay. The checks of the boss. So they want you to collect the checks and, and bring it to, bring it and bring it to the thing. So that got it. any any realtors come, you can give them the check. Y'all real got it. Y'all be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let them show up with no check, man. <laughs> or <at> three. <laughs> so yeah, so you bring the checks there, and they are, they typically put the package for you, and they have. One. Oh, okay. So so I don't have to sweat the printer right now, or I do. Not it. Not if you work with the buyers. Um, not if you work with buyers. But if you're gonna do like refis. Uh, refinances then you, you're gonna need to print mm -hmm. because you got i'm gonna need the printer right because you got to break no i i i can um so i have a um i have a staples right around the corner for miles that i you know i'm in there every day you know buying things but i was looking at those printers some of them are a few hundred bucks with the scanners so i figured you know if i get a like you know i think staples close at like 10 11 o'clock around my house so i feel like i could just print all the documents there just have it prepared before i go you know yeah, yeah. Or would that be a problem because I might need to print while I'm there? No, you don't have to worry about printing while you're there. Um, typically, you print the documents before mm -hmm. um, you go to the closing. But if you do a refinance, but if you print the documents at Staples, like if you don't buy a printer, it could be costly. I'm told on the shows, show the shows, like dollar eight is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, okay. But, but I mean, you print like a hundred to 150 pages sometimes document i see it's wow. Well, and if you do a refinance you got to print one set for you to for them to sign and the so i said from the buyer it's an easy got it so that's like 200 pages so that if you yeah yeah it's better if you have your own true 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 like well i mean you know if you do the first few um yeah it's fine but then eventually you're gonna need no for sure for sure cool cool so how many pages is this one that you got this one is 90 pages Oh, that is my new page. And this is one, I can't remember. This was a closing that I did. Oh. 
This was last year. 2000, yeah, 2020. Okay. Just looking through my, uh, my back to the farm, farm. This one, this is the first one that came up. Wow. Um, so typically the way I like to do a closing is I try to finish the closing within 30 minutes. Right. I'm, wow. I try to knock it out. Sure. Sure. That's, right. But the time it could be more is if you are multiple, multiple signers, like if you have two signers, three signers, sometimes four signers. Okay. Intuition. And then you okay. get their IDs. The first thing you do, you know, you collect their IDs and there's usually a form in here, um, that you have to drop that information now, like the driver's license or passport or whatever. Right. And then you're going to have to take a picture because you have to okay. include a, a copy of their IDs. And, yeah. All right. Okay. And then typically how I like to organize the documents to make things go fast is I, I like to present the numbers first, because if there's any problems, typically the numbers is going to be with the numbers, right? So you got it. I put the closing disclosure first and then I put the note. And then I put the mortgage. So the first three documents I go over first, and that that eliminates 90 percent of the problems. Because when I just right, I, I just I just presented the package. However, the the lender gives it to you, and sometimes they give it to you in all the, the weird order. That you right. have the order that you want to present. Right, it's given to you in, but I like to organize it in a certain way so that I don't want to get to the numbers last. So that is a true. Right, right. After you, after you spent thirty. So the closing disclosure, you like to keep up front. That's the first document we go over. Yeah. After you get the IDs, this is the first document. And it's like the way, mm -hmm. the way I typically start it, you know, and I, I say, um, I'm going to go over the numbers with you first. Um, because if we find a, because if, the, and if there's any, no, this is how I say, it. I say, hello, so-and-so, uh, my name is Aaron. Um, I'm here to go over the numbers with you. Um, if you disagree with any of the numbers, we can call somebody and strangle them and figure out what the problem is. Right. I usually like laugh and I usually like, right, right, right. like the icebreaker. I know Ron, you're going to kill it with this because <laughs> I, you know how to like break the ice. <laughs> so the right, right, right. Ice, and then I kind of get a temperature from them on how they feel, you know? And then yeah. they're like, oh, so-and-so did bad or the seller gave me a problem. They'll usually bring up a problem. Like, oh, then you can kind of gauge on, can this be like a, can I make a lot of jokes or do I need to just be serious? Yeah, yeah. Or be direct. Right, right, right. Exactly. For sure. So then they're like, okay, yeah, yeah. We can. They, they usually laugh when I say that because I'm mm -hmm. going to strangle them. It makes makes them feel like I'm a, a human being too. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. But also known as the notary, you really are no one's side. You're there to be like a third party. Yes. So no opinions about the rate. It'll be like, oh, right. They got to ask yourself like, oh, did I get it? Is that a good rate? And I'm like, yeah. You know, like I'm, and they usually say, you know, typically it depends on the person. You know, if you does true. Right, it's like different variables. So right. I can't really tell you if that's a good rate. Mm -hmm. You know. And stuff like right. that. You don't want to get your opinion about it. No, for sure. Of the, course not. You kill the deal, man. Yeah. Just, just. All right. So then I used to typically say, you know, your loan amount is 309. This one is 375. So you definitely know it's last year. 3.75%. Yeah. And I usually say, uh, well, here I say it's a 30 year, 30 year fixed rate mentioned alone. So it depends on, I usually go over this and I, I point it out. Like I point to it, depend, like right on here. Right. And, and then I say, you know, principal interest is 1431. And I say, and I say that, you know, the 1431 along with your, what you got to put in escrow for 1210. And I say the escrow covers, and, it, and I go down to this section, um, the federal value taxes, the homeowner's insurance. And I say your payment is 20, 26, 41. Got it. And I say the cash to close is $1,030, dollars and 89 cent. And I said, okay. do you bring a check for that today? And it will tell me, yeah, they bring a check. And I said, okay. hopefully, and I'll just say, hopefully you didn't forget the 89 cent. And yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, right. If you look at this page, you see that's when they brought that check 10. Got it. So then that's it. And then I say, I like to make sure my numbers are the same numbers you've already seen. And then they say, yeah, that's the same numbers. And that's encouraged. So we have to grace. And then, right. And then, right. And then that, I go to, I will go over it is go over the last page. And then okay. I go to the last page and say, can you just sign here? And here. And yeah. Those times they'll look up here and say, well, um, you know, wow, I'm paying 518000 over the life of the loan. Um, or did we say, um, oh, I thought my rate was, she says 3.8816. Um, yeah. So I thought my rate was 37, 375. And I said, yeah, right. I said, but I'm going to say this number is looking at a bird's eye picture of your entire loan. Um, so it goes over all the different fees that you paid, like the lender fees. Oh, loans that you've paid. This is that that's why they summarize it here. So if you look at this loan calculation, it looks at the higher loan. Hmm. The, the entire loan was calculated. was calculated. I got you. Okay. So I, and they say, you see how your total amount is 518, which a loan amount is on it. Right. Whatever. Three something. I feel that. Oh, okay. I see. And then that's it. Mm -hmm. Mind. That's it. 
if you at an attorney's office, sometimes the attorney may want to drive or they may want to go over the documents themselves. The attorneys you know, are long winded, so they're going to want to go to Oh, wait, the attorneys go over the closing? Uh, sometimes. Every, really? every attorney is different. Some attorneys want to do it themselves. So you just stand in there and they'll go over the whole thing or just to close the statement? Some of them, wow. some of them like to go over the, the three documents I mentioned, the closing disclosure, the note and mortgage, and they say you go out over the rest. Okay. Some, of them, some of them like to do the whole thing and wow. I'm to say, you know, no, you do it. And then, okay. So you, so if you're meeting an attorney for the first time, I mm -hmm. use an attorney like, you want to drive or you want me to drive? Oh, okay. And okay. Like, no, you drive. You, you take over. Some of them say, okay. I like to go over it. So like, got it. A lot of times these attorneys are personal friends or whatever with the person. So they want to... Um, well, if they charge a lot, or they charge a high fee, they want to show that they do work. Yes, 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 yes. Fee. He looked, correct, correct. So I understand. It's all case by case. So I usually, when I meet an attorney for the first time, I usually ask them, hey, would you like to drive or what buy rent? And then he'll say, whatever. And I usually like to go to get to the closings like 15 minutes early. So that way I can have that discussion. Got it. So, no. so, all right. So then after I do this, they sign. I go to, oh, oh this is another document. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, Alta. So this is like an itemized version of the numbers that you've seen. Okay. Um, of that, it's an itemized version of the closing disclosure. So this doesn't include like their rate or anything like that. This mm -hmm. is like pure numbers and usually all the party in the side. So the buyer and the seller will sign this document. And typically you will give this document to a copy of this document to the, uh, the realtor. Got it. And that's true. Okay. But then they use this with their check to, to get, to get. Okay. Um, uh, what was that document called? It's called the Alta or some uh, Alta. Alta. The, it's in all the um, American Land Title Association, or sometimes they call it um, HUD. Okay, so the HUD is the HUD. Or Alta. Yeah. Okay. That's the same document. It's, it's synonymous. And it goes to, to the realtor and it goes to the attorney. Yeah. Period. A copy, right? So, yeah. So they, they, they need it. But they usually have to be signed by all parties. But this one didn't include the seller. So that's why I won't separate. But sometimes. You see it all to the has the, the the signers being like the buyer and the sellers um signature line, so they all have to sign there um so yeah so you'll give a copy of this to the um the realtor and the attorney um so this the next document is a note so typically what i say when i get to the note i'll say this is one of the more important documents this is just your promise to pay the mate right, right. And then I'll just say, then it basically says it here, borrowers promise to pay. So that's what it says on the first line. So you can't really forget that. And then you just say, okay, so again, the loan, I'll say again, the loan amount is 309 at 3.75%. Um, your first payment is April 1st. This was 2022. And your last payment is March 1st, 2052. So now it's like a 30 year difference. And then they're right. laughing like, oh, I don't even know why I'm, I'm going to be dead at 30 years. Right, right, right. Kind of, right. <laughs> and then when you say, um, um, this, 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 um, no, you don't, you don't have any prepayment penalties. You can pay off a loan at any time. Cause that's the question that will also come up and a prepay. So I just say at the time, um, and I'll also say on the next page, it shows, um, that's it. Yeah. On the next page, it shows you have a 15 day grace period. So I say your payment is due on the first beginning on April 1st. Uh, and I'll, if it's April 1st, I'll say like my April fools, it was not April fools, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. I was just say, um, oh, so your payment is due <laughs> 15 days ago. So you have a glitch period. So don't be, uh, you know, afraid if you're a few days late. Right. So that's what I typically say. One thing to, 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 to know on this, um, sometimes, um, most times the signer just has to sign without any date here. Well, just a signature, no date. Um, but other times, uh, they'll have to also initial. So like what bank, like Chase, for example, Chase. They like to they like the signers to initial each page. So you every page of the note that it or the yeah. So you have to initial. So you, in the bottom right corner, you will look for like for initials. I'll try to do that. Yeah. So I have a question. So every uh when I get these when I get these jobs, uh do I get directions to or or not necessarily? Like direct okay. as far as as far as like like you said, um chase they want the 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 uh note initial at the bottom or is that just for me to know that when it's chase okay well that's for you to know because well you'll see it here you'll see it on the bottom you'll say initial you'll say initial 
not it there. So if it doesn't say that, then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. But if you like this one, you don't see it. So you don't have to worry about initial flight. And you will see it. It'll say initial and then you'll see the t a line or two lines here. That'll be full. That'll, I'll see if I'll find an example. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that's the note. And then next thing is the mortgage, right? So the mortgage and if they ask what the difference between the note and the mortgage, they say the note is the promise to pay the money and the mortgage is the security instrument. So the security. So this is what gets recorded on the Got it. Right. Okay. And then if they, and then the mortgage is usually 14 pages or 19, 20 pages. I say, I usually say, um, um, this is the mortgage and it's 14 and 14 pages. They're basically saying, if you don't pay, they take the house. That's right. They, they still have like mm -hmm. you're free to read the 14 pages, but all they do is they use the same mortgage template for every home and right. plug in your name and address and then that's it. And then they're like, okay. So now we go to the next page. Believe it or not, some people want to read this and you of course can read it, but most people, they don't care. So they just write it. Um, and then you go to the last page. T or this is when it's page 13, they sign. Sometimes, most times mortgages will have a signature and a slash date where you sign a name. Mm -hmm. This one didn't have it for several reasons. But on um, the next page is where you know I notarized this. Right. Sometimes this is pre filled in, sometimes not. So you have to split your state or whatever. Right. Um, and then you decide, you sign. Yeah, this one said print name title below. So this is all different. You just have to look at the instructions real quick. Yeah, you have to do it. Oh, okay. So you just basically, you know, signs your name, well, wrote your name, and then you stand. Yeah, right. Got it. Who wasn't supposed to sign in? Yeah, yeah. So you have to sign too. You know, it says print name and title. Oh, you always sign anytime you... Okay. Always sign. Even if it doesn't say it, you have to sign it. True. Let's have a print name and title below signature. See? So you see? Yeah. So you, I see. So that's why I sign and I print my name and title below. Now that looks good. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. So then after I go over the the, the, the CD, uh, the note and the mortgage, um, I usually say, okay, the next few documents that we about to sign are all just um, um, addendums. Um, but the, the documents that we just previously signed are the most important. Documents. So, and then this, and then there's just a bunch of standardized documents that they have. So this one is uh, okay. specific to the closing instructions. Um, mm -hmm. Let's read it. It's an addendum to the specific closing instructions. Right. It assigned it. So this one, see, it's a sign and date. Mm -hmm. date. You just have to always be mindful of the date here. The date, that's right. And sometimes they'll sign and not put the date, but you have to mm -hmm. always look for the date. For the, if you ask for the date, put the date. Right. Another, another thing I do want to mention is about their signature. So a lot of times people may say, how should I sign? I usually tell them to sign how they normally sign or sign mm -hmm. at least how they sign, how they sign a lien on their ID. Right. Um, cause if they need to match it, they'll match it to their ID. Um, but if for whatever reason you still get pushback, you know, you yeah. get, they just sign your name as you see it on the line. So right. If this guy going to sign Thomas M. Carl Luco, Colipio, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the same thing. So, but you see this one, the sign is how, however she wanted to sign the chain. Right. But yeah. Usually, so make sure tell them to sign the way that you signed on your your driver's license oh, or your ID. Right, exactly. That's something okay. if they if they if it comes up. But usually, I don't yeah. do anything about signature unless they bring it up to me. True. Okay. I don't try to push people on their own signature. True. All right. And then all right. So this is the closing instructions. Uh, up to the next one. Next one is the customer ID notification. So this one is just they just confirming their ID and their social. So they sign a date there. Got it. Mm -hmm. It is notice the right to cancel. All right, so this one was this one was a refi. You only get this document if it's a refinance. Okay, a notice notice of right to cancel. Okay, right, because technically, um, when they do a refi, the bank has by law has to give them three business days to cancel. Right? Mm. So even if they, they 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 even if they refi, the bank by law has to give them three business days. So they signed it on the eighteenth, and they had until the twenty third cancel. Okay. So you say this is a notice of right to cancel. Today's the 18th. The bank is giving you until the 23rd to cancel. And then got it signed on the bottom saying that it's cancel. He, this person started signing here by mistake. And I was like, well, if you wish uh, to sign here. So he's like, oh no. So he scratched it out next. Mm, right. Got it. Make sure they sign them. And then the same thing for the seconds. So um, this next one is in regards to um, income. 
So they just have to go and read each line and listen next to whatever is applicable. It's sending it on the bottom. So, so did, so you gave this to them, just my income has not decreased from the amount shown on the loan application. So they initial, oh, it's a borrower and a co-borrower. So it looks like a husband and wife, maybe? The husband and wife, they sign next to each one that's applicable and then they sign it. Got it. All right. So these bankers just want to verify that they, I'm going to change short. Yes. Yet. All right. The next is the first payment coupon. Um, this one is just showing um, what the payment amount is going to be and when the first payment is due with the soils. We signed in uh, February, the first one was April 1st. I mean, sorry. No, the first one was April 1st, right? It was April 1st and then this one was. Yes. This one is in. So this is the second payment coupon. So they gave out payment coupons. That's like an old way of doing business. They gave them payment coupons because back in the day before, they had to like cut the coupons. They didn't technically you have a coupon. They call it a coupon, but it's really a receipt that you have to mail in back in the day. It's a payment. Okay. So they still look for that in the it's called a temporary payment coupon. And what does it do? What is it? What is it? It, it gives the, the, it gives the bank a reason. It gives, okay. So the payment coupon is included because the, it's two, two reasons. The payment, they really include the payment coupon so that the, the seller has no excuse not to send the payment. So that they have a physical reason. They have a physical uh, copy of this. They don't have mm -hmm. payment is due on April 1st. Mm -hmm. so if the bank never communicates with them, from now until like a few months from now, even if April first passed, they still have to make that payment because they got a copy of the payment coupon and they have got as a way to send the payment to. So it's it's a, it's a reason how to bank. It's like a commitment. Got you. They have it's making the, the buyer commit by giving them a payment coupon. Right. They have no excuse not to send a payment in. Like you're like, oh, I, I see what you're saying. I never knew where to where to send my payment to, and I'm not familiar with with online. I got you. Okay. So if you're dealing with an elderly person who doesn't have a computer, for example, they can right. payment it. And correct. The more they sign and dated it, right? So the bank will have a copy of this and they'll have a copy of the payment. So they could just right. the page out, they'll drop it in the mail with a check and make sure it's there by it first. Or post it, post it by it first. Yeah. That's, so that's what it is. So they sent them this and they also sent them the second. So for, for, for April and May. So they have no excuse to make those payments because a lot of times these banks like Guarantee Reed and other banks, they may sell the loan to another company mm. in Chase or to someone else. So the communication may stop, but the payment is still due, right? So um, they don't have an excuse not to make the payment. That's all it is really. Understood. Okay. All right. So the next one is authorization to release social. I usually just tell them on this page, um, just please verify your social and the sign in date. Cool, guys. Sign on it. The next one is a compliance agreement. All right. So this one is saying that in the in the event that after you sign all these pages, the 90 pages in this case, if the bank needs another document signed, that you will comply with. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So after we need after this after you leave the home and you send everything in, a week or two may pass and the bank say, Oh shoot, I forgot to send them this. So you re you're already signing off that you will, you know, communicate with the bank and get that document. And the compliance agreement, not only them sending you a document, they may request a document that they forgot to get. That too, right? So they may request like, you know, like pay stubs or whatever. Right. A compliance to continue to work with them. True, true. Right. Uh, then you have to notarize it. And then that's, that's true. You notarize, sign, date. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, name after David. So this one could be tricky sometimes. Not tricky, but... They could come up sometimes. So, um, the name affidavit comes after they do a credit search for them, for the signer, it may come up with different variations of their name. Mm. Well, this one, this person, uh, Thomas he had different variations of his name. See, he had Thomas, yes, Tom. So you may go with yeah. other names. Sometimes they may say, oh, that's not me. And, uh, or the, or the, or the, oh, that's my father. I'm the third. I'm Thomas. Oh, so they may say, so you say, okay. So what you have them do in this case is they'll strike it once and then mm -hmm. above it or next to it, not known as. That's okay. It. Not known as. So they'll strike Got it, it, but not known as. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, you know, in the, uh, the Latin community, you see this a lot. Oh, for sure. Mm. So they crossing out only one or they crossing out all except one? No, they cross out the one that they do not agree with. So they, oh, okay, okay. So say, for example, if he asked Thomas three times and he asked Tom, 
He's true. I, no one ever calls me Tom. And you say, okay, well, you could have strike this out once and it's put not. Um, got you. You know what I'm saying? It's not known as got it. And on that. So then he was the son of it. All right. And then the same for the second cyber. They have two. So Jane, she made two women for females. A lot of times their maiden name may come up. Right. And you're like, oh yeah, that's my maiden name. Okay. So you know that's that name too, right? Yeah. Okay. Then. Okay. The bank is trying to verify identity. I got a ID. Say so you yeah. have an excuse to say that that wasn't you. Well, mm-hmm. it's not you. Man. Got it. All right. So the next one is uh, initial tax notice authorization. All right. So this one comes up. Um, this is a document that the county uses. Um, to you give the county permission to send the tax bill to the bank. Hopefully that makes sense. So the bank is holding the escrow account, right? That every time you make a payment is. Mm-hmm. Your house, right? I don't know if you, yeah. you so you send a payment and the bank is paying your taxes, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. They, they, they put a little bit in escrow and at the end of the year, they go ahead and pay it for me. So this is what this form is. I'm sure when you bought your house, you sign something like this. So and I don't there read none of that stuff. <laughs> I feel yeah. Got no, yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is what they say. I'm going to read it after this. Now you're talking about it though. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. I mean, I said it from my house too. So like when you, you signing, you basically give him the, um, the, the town authorization to send the bill mm-hmm. directly. To, bank, to the bank so that the bank is going to pay that your taxes on your behalf that's what it's so the, the, the inside the sign it and then the, the town they're going to send this document to the town and the town is going to send the bill directly to the bank and they'll send you okay that's it. so this is already pre-filled you didn't fill this out already this is already pre-filled yeah you can write insider you just sign okay the part of the sign and date okay this one this case is per date sometimes they print it for you mm-hmm. all right the next one is the occupancy and financial statement. Um, this one is stating that there's going to be a principal residence, so they are living there. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if, it, is it, if it's an investment or or second home, just the other boxes are right. check. Got it. And then you they sign a date. You also know the rents. Um. Oh, so this is the form. This is what I was saying talk to you about earlier. So when you collect their IDs, this would be like a U.S. Patriot Act form that will come in. Um, you just have to look for how many IDs are required. In this case, they require two IDs from each party. Most oh. of them is just one. Right. Most times it's just one ID, but this one they require two. Okay. I see it last two forms of identifying documents for review. Right. So then there's a two forms of ID. They just have to sign. I mean, like, and this is for you to fill out. They don't sign this. So you got it. You put in your ID. He just let them. This is a verifying. I, I, I seen Aaron driver's license and he showed me his passport and this is the numbers. So you was it? You said U.S. Patriot Act. This is just to verify that you have two IDs, and it's showing you it that um That's to collect two forms. Exactly. So then you rate, you rate, and these are the things you could do: military ID, social security card, birth certificate. So a lot of what would be considered other, like if they only have like health insurance card, like if they don't have the, all they have is a driver's license with them. A lot of times mm-hmm. they have that with them. A lot of times they might want they might try to give you like a credit card. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like taking credit cards because we have true copies of it. So, oh, and I say, I tell them, no, if you don't, if you have really a health credit card, usually you always carry the health. Yeah. Yeah. So get- yeah. Credit cards is this. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Some people like, cause then you got to put the number there. You got nah. you to make a copy of it and everything. I said, I said, I could take a copy of credit card, but a little, if you, you know, if you listen to the health right. And- <laughs> I, I just tell them like, I just tell them like, you know, she gave me like, yeah, it's safer. Okay. Or they want have like a Costco's card or like a BJ's card. That's a soul. Like, or you could use that also as a second. Anything with their name on it. Yes, as a secondary form. The primary has to be like something like a the ID, like a ID, like a passport or like a driver's license. It has to be all the even the military ID. It's fine. Anything with the picture on it, but mm-hmm. it to be you know legit. And then the secondary form, I don't care if it doesn't have it. And then you get both over here. Got it. In this case, I was fortunate. They, I mean, I was at their house, so they had everything be open. So they had show. Sure. And um, and then you sign. You sign, but you don't have to. You don't have to put your stamp. There's no. Okay, you don't have to notarize it. Right. You can't. You can't notarize your own signature. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You have. To, you only could notarize someone else's. Right. You're just signing it yourself. So you just signed it. Mm-hmm. Name, that's it. I understood. And then same thing. Same to see. Oh, this one, this person had a birth certificate. So it was a birth certificate and then their passport. So that was it. 
Nice. All right. And um, how you like doing house visits, man? Uh, <laughs> it depends, man. I mean, you, you get people that, some people have to dirt at the house. Yeah, man. And a lot of it during COVID, you know, a um, lot of people houses and backyards, stuff like that. Wow. And refinances, you know, I mean, I'm in and out, so I'm in there for 30. Oh, you try to, you try to fast at the table, put the kids away. Let's run through this and that's it. And I, and I, I don't, I, I try to do it in a way that I'm not making them feel rushed. You know, true, true, true. So I, you know, I go through it and cause like a lot of times if they, if they feel rushed, like you rushing them, they'll give that feedback to wherever you are. Uh, so I, I usually try to pace myself and take my time. True. And even ask them, am I moving too slow for you or moving too fast? And you know, you know what I mean? You know, one thing I usually like to ask is especially, especially like if you're doing, um, a purchase, like a, like a purchase, I said, you know, is this your first hold? And they said, like, right. no, this is my third hold. So then you can speed through the documents. They've been through. True. Sure. Sure. But if they said, no, this is my first hold, I typically dial back and I go a little slower. And I just right. over explain things. True. Sure. Sure. I'm explaining it to you. Like, right, right. Uh huh. And then, mm-hmm. oh, okay, okay. And then I'm do that. But if it's like third hole, I'm like, I'm breezing through it. Yeah. You didn't read it on a third time, man. Yeah, that, that. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, and uh, that's that. Um, so you now, where did you make the copy from when you were home? I was I was at their house, so they had like a this person had like a copy of there, a scanner. Uh, okay, yeah, they had like a scanner to copy into the copy to you. But a lot of times, what I do is I would just take a take picture, picture on my phone. Yeah, and then print it when you leave. Print it when I leave, or if I have to pending, if I have to drop the documents back right away, then I would just um. Um, send an email to my client say, yeah, I didn't get to make a copy, but here's an email of their, their, their IDs. I'm like, okay, great. And like, oh, so they could print it out. Okay. okay. You don't necessarily have to stress yourself about like write that all the time. You can email it to your client or well, if you have, if I have time, I'll print it out and print it myself. Right. All right. So after you go through the loan documents, typically you will have some title documents, right? So this is my client out simplicity title. They have some title documents. So. Um, this one was, uh, verification of how they wanted the documents. So they wanted like the, the check, the, the CD, the copy of the check, right? That's why I borrow CD. That's why I had the alter first because they requested it that way. Usually I don't, this alter in the beginning, I usually have a CD note mortgage, but they wanted it first. So that's why. Okay. And 10, the 10, the 10, the 10, the 1033 loan. Yeah. The whole application was in there. Why, why did I say it was not the package? On the 1033 loan application, it should have said 1003. So I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll show you what that is. Um, and then these are just like some emails. Wow. But this is not, you don't need to. If, um, I think, do you go over this or not necessarily? Okay. Okay. I don't, my rule of thumb is I usually go over things that need to get signed. That's right. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. You'll be there all day. I mean, so it's trying to explain this and, and you don't know way. And, and, and it's really not your job to really explain all these documents. It's really the loan officer's job to. That's right. And, 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 and really, you don't really know about the document. You just got them. That's what I'm saying. You just pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Let me like, let me go to school. So that's why I try not to answer too many questions. That we don't know. What I would do is get some stickies you know, sign here kind of thing just before I get there and put it all in. So I know exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm not going through the documents like this because, oh, wait, it's a signature right there. I think, oh, no, 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 that's not. It's, 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 this is not, I got you. This one is an acknowledgement, like a close, like you'll see a lot of funding instructions, instructions from the bank to title, title company. Yeah. This, this is how they want. This is how we need, they basically say, this is how we need things in order to, to fund this. Thing. And then this is the instructions for the title. So it's 90 pages, but it's not 90 signatures. And that's how it is. Maybe, maybe 10, 20, you know, if that. Well, like, like maybe 10 or 20, or two, 10 or 20, but a lot of times they made it way cool bank statements, you know, because sometimes with a refund, it's especially part of the deal is that the bank is going to pay off. They want to decrease your debt. So, yeah. like, if you go to the bank and say, I need a refinance, I need to uh, pay off some debt. They go like, okay, th- we, we can give you the refinance, but we got to pay the debt for you. We're going to see what your, what your debt, send us your debt so that we could pay. But, uh, they don't want to give you the money because then you still be in debt. Right, right, right. So, like, this one, so the particular case, they, they had an American Express card. 
So the bank is not pay of their uh, so then you have to include the state copies of the statements so they can yeah, so they can call them and pay. Or like, um, wow. So like, right. It's not really that hard. I mean, it, 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 you know what I mean? Um, the way you explained it, you explained it better than Mark, man. You know, Mark is the, <laughs> nah, I know. No, 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 no. But I mean, but, you right under, under him, man. You right there. Yeah, man. I mean, but it's, it's I mean, I, I learned to keep it like 30 minutes. This is like 30 minutes. Yeah. Before. Oh wait, this one right here, the alpha day with a title. So let's we'll get to this. So this is the alpha day with a title. So this one is a, a document that the title company keeps in their office and their files if ever they need it. So this one is basically, um, the, the cider is basically saying that they have no judgments, no liens, uh, like, like child support, things like that. They don't have those liens. That's typically in a sale, any liens. Like any like uh, judgments or uh, it has to get paid off right while you're buying the house, right? So if you watch you need to confirm that. So this way, and it also confers marital marital status. So in this particular right. case, they're married, but they named in there, and this one they have any child support. So I usually got it where I usually crack a joke too. I, I usually look at the husband, mm -hmm. and I'll say, mm -hmm. "Well, were you married?" And then he looks at the wife, uh -huh. and the wife is looking at him like, "What? You don't know when we got married?" Just, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I say, "I'm trying to get you. I'm I'm trying to get you to sleep on, on the couch to the to the right. <laughs> laugh at and then they right, right. So, the, so the, I, any opportunity I get to like bring that makes them feel comfortable, yeah, and comfortable, and also like not talk so much business. True, especially like especially like when they buy a home. This is supposed to be like a happy moment for them. So I'm sure the whole process happy moment for them, and I also turn it into make my client up good. Because they said, oh, the guy that they brought to do the closing for us, he's a cool, he was a cool dude. Got it. Also, I'm representing, I'm the last face they see in the whole transaction. You know? Okay. After me, they get the keys and they move it in. You know? Okay. So I don't want the, t I don't want them to get a bad taste. I don't, I don't want them to get a bad taste of the entire process because I'm the last person they see. I want it to kind of same experience for him. So always like try to try to do that as much as I can. Right. So I'm sorry. I'm just talking. talking. No, no, that my, makes sense. My little golden nuggets, but you already know this, man. Because you, you know, you press. I mean, I mean, nah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a student in training right now. You know, yeah, speaking to, preaching to the choir. <laughs> nah, nah. This is, this is not my field. This is you. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's just a variation of what you've been doing already. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The funny thing is, when I brought my house, man, I'm gonna be honest. I don't even remember none of these documents, but they were there. I just didn't read them. The attorney actually went over it with me, not the loan officer, my attorney, but he was just like saying kind of what you were saying, sign here, sign here, this, that, you know, so it was just very interesting. And New York is different too, because you know, it's well, okay. It's a state and like, usually like attorneys, this is an attorney state. So that's for sure that I would have gone on a lot of the things. So you may experience that a lot. Um, when you do your closings, uh, yeah, that's where they want to do work. That's fine, but then when he go, when he he when they sign and date, do I then take the paperwork and go through it in front of them and just stamp everything and sign? No. So yeah. So basically, what the attorney usually do, he goes over the documents and anything that needs to get notarized. He, well, as he goes over the documents, he's handing them to you. Oh okay. yeah, that's what happened with me. So there was a a, 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 a white woman there, mm -hmm. and I didn't know she was the the, the notary, but she. Once we finished, she was sitting there stamping and signing and she never, and I had to give her my ID, you know, so I knew, yeah, she was a new, but, but she didn't do, she didn't do the note, like the attorney did it. She just stamped and signed. Yeah. Cause the attorney, she probably had a discussion like I was telling you before. Yeah. The attorney, do you want to drive or you want me to drive? And yeah. But she, nah, he was legit. And you just sit back and then as a notary, you sit back and you just stamp it. What I but, typically is I usually get to the closers a little early. Or if I have the, yeah, for sure. Or if I get to the documents before, I, like if I did the documents the day before, I would stamp it. Well, oh, I was going to ask you that. Are you, do you have to stamp it in front of them or can they come stamp? Because you see how like when you're a notary, you have to sign in front of a notary. But do I have to stamp in front of a buyer? Okay. So if you go by the rules, you just yes. everything by in front of the person. True, true. Me? I do it beforehand because God, it save time, but it is, I'm the person that's submitting the document. So if I believe that that person is not who they say they are, I'm not submitting. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that's, that's the gray area. I mean, technically you're supposed to sign your data. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you can't notarize an empty document, supposedly. But like you said, you're the one who's submitting a document. So if things don't work out, you could just shred it. Shred it. If I feel like you're not the person, then it's likely to get submitted. No, no, no. But so I do, I do all my work beforehand. So when I sit there, I'm yeah, and you don't want to be sitting there, you know, doing it in front of them, killing time. You can got you. Like when I just started, well, I mean, I I I, I implemented that over the years, but I knew, like, as I got a, a more custom with the documents, I started just doing it beforehand. Yeah. Got it. But you you have to go higher for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the last one and this one. This is the last document for this particular package. I'm, I'm gonna have another package. I'm not. Sure. Um. Yeah, I wanna um, I wanna look. So let's can we go back to this one? This is a refinance we doing, right? Can we go to the top for a second? First page. Y yeah. Uh, the first first page. Okay, so this is so this is check. So this is the first page. So basically, oh yeah, the close it. So you always start with this because this is the money you mentioned. You always put this on top of the packet. But before you do this, you said make sure you collect IDs, two sets of IDs or passports or whatever that document say you want to read that before. Yeah. If it say two, you get passport, ID, a full stamp card, whatever it is <laughs> that you could, you know, that you can check off. So you got those in your possession. You don't, you just hold it because you're going to need it when you get to that page to write the information now. And then you just basically read what you see. This is the closing document. And then you just let them know, your, is your loan amount correct? It looks like you have a 3.75 interest rate. Your mortgage is 14.31 and three cents. Your, your, your principal and interest is 14.31 uh, and three cents. And then it says the estimated escrow that's going to be in your account is 12.1079. And then your actual monthly mortgage is 26.4182. Um, and then you said the estimated taxes and insurance. Is twelve ten seventy nine, and and then you have a check hopefully today for a thousand and thirty and eighty nine cent, and then the total closing cost is going to be thirteen thousand twenty dollars and five cent. So that's it on this page, and then they sign on the next page. No, this is a total of five pages. See if you want to. Oh, oh, oh. For the, okay. So then you um you can just go. I go to the fifth. They ask you well, a lot of the numbers. We go to the signing page. Yeah. Sometimes. People are analytical. And they'll say, oh, for sure. They, yeah. I want to see all the numbers. So they'll have, I'll, of course, if they say that, I turn the page over and I give it to them. I say, these are yeah. people over it. And if they ask like, why did they charge me this? Or why did they charge me this? I'll say, I say, I haven't say, unfortunately, I can't answer that for you. What should I do that? Get you on the phone with the loan, the loan, um, either the loan officer or you can say, I would call. Well, well, this is how I would typically handle it. If they say this, why did, why am I charged this? And I'll say, do you be, were you working with the loan officer? And it'll say, yes. I say, do you have their number? And they say, yes. I say, well, you're free to call your loan officer and ask them any questions. If there's anything, I, if it's anything related to title, then I can call my client and call, you know, title. I can call them, whoever your title is. Um, I'll call my client and then they can go over the numbers. But like if they have a problem with six with C right here, with mm -hmm. title fees. Got it. I mean, a lot of times they may have a question like, um, sometimes if they deal with like a, a bank that has like a broker, and they may have like the high broker fees. You can say, well, you can call the law office. Call. Them. You stop the law right there. You sit back and oh, and let them talk and let them go over it. I've, uh, I've had situations where they said, no, I don't want to move forward. Really? And then you just stop right there. Because a lot of times there's loan officers who don't explain this. For sure, for sure. And they get, they get to the closing table and they, they have no clue what's going on. So then you, and it, it puts you kind of in a weird position because you like, I'm saying, I'm sorry, what you just, of course, but, and I always tell them, I want you to feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I want you to feel comfortable. And I didn't put these numbers together. <laughs> right. Well, you, yeah, well, you can say that, well, I try, you know, I try not to throw people under the bus. This am just sure, sure. Like, I, I'm sure, because you just say, you know, I'm just saying, unfortunately, I, you know, you need to call your loan officer to figure out. To, to, to confirm these numbers are, are accurate. Yeah. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that makes so this is a refi that we did. Yeah, so the refi it's a refi it's a refi that I did, yeah, correct. Yeah. It's not that's not that's not really that's all the pages that came with that refinance though. Yeah, that's only ninety only ninety pages that came with it. Yeah. But I mean those were the only pages to sign. Right. Pretty much. Yeah, that's that's nah, that's light. And yeah, that's all that's light. This is light. 
And then when you finish, when we finish, say I went to a, a, a borrower, they signed, I gave them back the IDs, I did all, the, I got all my signatures and all my stamps. The next steps is to, to, uh, to scan all these documents, email them to you. Right. So, uh, it's case by case. Um, yeah. So typically what you'll do is you'll scan them in, send them over and then yeah. you drop them in. Um, that's all oh, you scan them and then they got to get the original as well. You scan them, right? And they have to. They have to get their retro. Of course. So, then, so what you do? You UPS or FedEx? Well, yeah. So the, you, they usually come with a label, um, um, a FedEx or UPS label, like an overnight label. Um, that got it. Put that in there. Drop it in the mail. But the reason they they want something they want scanned yeah, so it depends. So a lot of times, banks sometimes want to review it right at, uh, ahead of time. Like if it's a small if it's a small bank, they got to program do it. Hold on. Um, a lot of a lot of times, um, if it's a sale, if it's a sale, for example, the um, uh, the lender is going to want to review it before you leave the closing table. So okay. Like, so like, say for example, for your little, for your closing, right? Well, yeah, the other is different because a lot of times a lot of people are at the table, so you could get it. Yeah, yeah. But like in Jersey, for example, we have to scan the documents in, and then we have to wait at the closing table till the till, till the the bank gives us uh, the okay. To, to uh, to move forward. Oh wow! But they like to check wow. signatures, make sure everything is signed, make sure they got everything neat, and then they decide it. So you want to? So you send it to the you send it to either you or the bank first before you, and let them okay you for you before you send it. Because if there's a signature mission, then you gotta you know circle back. And speaking of signature missing, whenever I do mm -hmm. whenever I do a refinance and after I finish everything. I don't even know. I usually tell the sign. I was like, "Listen, let me just go through this real quick and make sure we didn't miss anything." Then I go through sure, this real quick. I'll go look through it, and then if I miss anything, and then I have them sign it. So that makes sense. It avoids mistakes or anything or for it. Right. That looks crazy. Yeah. That don't look like you. Yeah. Exactly. You may appreciate it. Like, okay, great. I'm glad that you checked. So that I have to know. You see, I want to make sure that everything is good on our end, so that way I don't have to come back. I said, so that you don't have to see where I look facing you. And maybe it's like laughing or whatever. That was it. Bow me. So that's a typical refi. Um, let me see. I mean, I may have another one to show you if you want to, if you have to come up in it. Yeah, sure, sure. I appreciate this, man. Big time. Of course, of course. I was speaking to you. How's the business looking right now? Is it slow? Oh, uh, well, I, all this is really busy. Um, the slowing down good in September. Of course. Uh, it, it, it usually happens to me September. Then as we get towards the holidays, it slows down. Mm -hmm. That's true. But January, it normally picks back up. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. hopefully. It starts to pick up a little bit in January and it won't go on. But are you doing at least two sign-ins a week? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. And I'm outsourcing a lot of my sightings too. So I do have a matter. I do a lot of national. The nationals, okay. And then let them, the things that obviously you can't get to, of course. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like a lot of my clients, they may have their like sellers. People have homes in New Jersey and they need to they, they live in California or you know, they live in Florida or whatever. Oh, they need to sell their house, right? So then we, I should have sent a notary did it. Um, night. I'm getting a lot of uh, stuff in Florida and Pennsylvania. Good, good, good. Uh, yes. Yeah. And then you doing the um after after we done, you can add me to your uh, referral list. You know, you know what I mean. Of course, of course. Add me, add me. See what's going on. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind. As long as I know what I'm doing, and I'm gonna learn when I, you know, when I get out there. And listen, you're not gonna. It's not gonna be perfect. One of the first few times you do it, you're gonna make mistakes. As long as you just take your time. And if you're true questions, just reach out to. Them. Oh, for sure. But then for sure, it took me a while. It took me it did like a first, my, my first sighting, I bombed it. Oh man. It was like, sure. what did you miss? Everything. Cause it was like, I, I, feel, I printed the documents, bro. <laughs> because like, what? When you print the documents, you got to make sure you don't cut off the pages. Cause a lot of times it'd be, it's legal and it's letter pages. So of course, right. That's why the dual trade printer is important. So that they, they shows, you know, so no, a lot of my pages were come cutting off and. And I, oh. and I couldn't figure it out. It was my first signing. And wow, we had to do it outside because it was like COVID. And mm -hmm. they wanted to do it in their house. And it was in their backyard, which was dark. It was about. Yes. Doc and What was that? What? 
No. Oh my God. Now with the legal and letterhead, that's interesting. Like if I get a document, can I just go to it and see if it's legal or letterhead? Like how do I know the, cause that's, that's always interesting to me when you print. It's funny you mentioned that. There is a program I used to use back in the day. I don't even know. It's okay. Let me see. Page, PDF page sorter. Yeah, this is, uh, this is it, okay. So let me just choose and just choose a file and it'll tell you. So this is a free, the free? Yeah, it's free. And I'll say, I'll say it only. Okay. So what you normally do when you get a document as an attachment, you normally drop it in here to kind of see where you are? No, I, I, don't, nope. I don't do this anymore. I used to do it when I just started because I was like, no, I like you to figure out the page. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I don't want to print all those documents and then I'm like, I just printed a hundred pages and they, yeah. My print, the, print, the print I use already knows, so, and I'll tell you the settings that I use. Oh, okay, that's dope. I was going to show you what I used to do before, though. Show sure. me, um, that. Where to go? They even start it. Now, that's, that's dope. Shit. So, the printer is important. These smart printers, man, they really smart for the money that you pay. Well, you're paying 300 out, it better be. Shh. It's more than that sometime, man. I see print this for six hundred. Five hundred? That's crazy. Shoes like a car, man. That's back to real. Yeah, bro, I was what is this? Like Bro, I saw one printer one late night. It was so expensive you had to finance it. <laughs> it was like a printer and scanner. <laughs> like, yeah, it was real, so but nah, this is important because process and I'm seeing it so do. So what you doing? You uploading it right now, right? Uploading it is a uh, seventy six letter pages and twenty eight label pages. So that's what I used to do. And then you could download each one if you would have done. So it's seventy six uh, letter, and then okay, wow. So when they send the documents, they don't send the documents all like they'll send some le legal, some letter, and you have to it mix and it's mixed up. See, like page. C. Oh, first the first fifty eight pages a letter that is five legal that is two letter. So Get out of here! So that's how they do it. That's crazy. <laughs> but what you did? Yeah, can you send me that link? I'm gonna check that out. Mm -hmm. But um, wait, and what you do? You just upload it to this portal. Yeah, you upload it to just choose. Okay, process. And then got it. It'll process the PDF right. Wow. And then you download it from here. You could download all the letter pages and then you could download all of it. It separates it. Sorry. It separates. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yes. And then that way, and then that way you download this attachment. Now, when you print them, you make sure that you follow. Right. So this is typically used if you have a printer that's single tray, right? So if you're only sure that that's only one tray, so the, yeah. you put the legal in, you download it, you print all the legals. Then you have letters, then you put all the letters in. So oh. You have a dual tray printer, then you don't have to worry about it. Is going to you to you, it's, I see it. you put legal you put letter in, in the top and then you put legal on the bottom and it, it automatically and it'll automatically download due to the configuration of it. Exactly. So let me just <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's sick. So yeah, when you when you hit print, when, you have a Mac too, right? Yeah, yeah. So at Max is funny that these printers went. And I this was well, this will happen to me the first day that I didn't know. If you keep the pages like this, sometimes okay. okay gets confused and it, they can't tell whether it's legal or letter. It's this iron oh. So what you need to do is um you have to flip the pages. So I usually like flip the pages upside down like this. And, oh yeah. And then I print it and then it knows. Oh. So like my first sighting I didn't know and I printed it and I couldn't figure it out. I noticed sometime two pages are print on one, they don't know where it stops at. Exactly. So then it's like oh. Oh. For the math, you got to flip it upside down. And then the, I, I, I did a ton of research and then I found like a YouTube. For real? I found a YouTube video and the guy was like, yes, let's flip the pages and I flip it. And then ever since then it works. So what I do, yo, flip the page. And then what I do is I just hit, I print, um, when I print, I'll show you. I hit print. And then what I do is I do a, um, actual size and then I have it choose the paper size for me. So then it will choose paper source. Okay. Oh, yeah, just oh, gotcha. And then it'll look so like when you flip through your pages, it's gonna know this is letter, this is um, letter, and as you go through, it will change. Oh, wow. So, so you'll have some pages eight by 11 and then some eight, four, eight by 14. And this is how, and this is how this, you know, the, the title companies have the documents to me. 
to some doctor shoe, legal some needs to be on letter. So then you go through it and then some legal some letter. So you see some. All right. It seemed like, like, this is not difficult at all, man. Like going through that training, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, bro, I don't, you know, I do real estate, man. I was like, bro, I don't know if I want to, this shit is a lot. But when you, when, when you look at it, it's, it's just a tech, like, I'm one of them people where uh, I'm like real tedious, you know? And I feel like it's just following directions, you know, stuff like that. I mean, once they sign, it's all about you printing the right documents, making sure that you're not overlapping, you know, documents and you just basically following directions and it's going to become repetitious to you, you know, but it looks it, like I said, it's, it's, it's not as hard as, you know, it seemed to be during that training, bro. That training was so long, man. I don't know if you took that training, man. That training was weeks. I took, I took the training. It's definitely, oh, it's definitely more. I was taking a nap, man. It was mad talking. A lot of stuff was good, but then when he started giving people advice, and I mean, the people started, I was like, I don't care about all this, man. We want to get to nitty gritty. But yeah, yeah. So it's not really difficult. It's just like you said, it's a little stuff, flipping the pages upside down, making sure that, you know, some is letter, some is legal. That stuff is important. Yeah, I mean, you can, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty straightforward, man. And I usually just go over it exactly. I showed you. Same. Yeah, same situation. The closing d disclosure is always on the front. Yeah, this one, I, I didn't, I didn't, or, I didn't organize it. I organized it after I printed it. Um, but okay, before you saw a scan of what I what I already did. This is a package that was not that didn't come organized. Our like you're not gonna see any signatures on it. True. I was gonna ask you, um, if they send it to you in a certain, uh, do you can you or do it have to be a certain uh, order to send it back or not necessarily? That's a funny one. Sometimes some banks will specifically say, "Do not reorganize the doc." Oh, and but then when they but when you get it, it's in the form that I like it. It's in the CD low mortgage alter. But then those are okay. The, those are the important. Those are the important one. And that's what they want to see. They want to see that first. Closing disclosure, the no mortgage. Those are the. They want to see that together. Those are the most important doc out of everything that they yes. Those three doc. That's what they want to know. So it's okay if I put those two on front. And then everything else could fall behind it. Well, the IDs first, and then the closing disclosure, and then everything come behind. And the note work. The promissory note, mortgage, and then everything else is all, you know. Everything else is how you. And I, 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 they're not going to trip. Uh, yeah, they're not going to trip. I try to keep everything in the order that they keep it, except for the CD bill of a mortgage. That goes yeah. to the top. That's, cause that could be like standard. Like everything I get, put these two on top. And all these four be really promissory note, the mortgage, the the uh, CD, and then the ID. Yep. Put those on top, and then everything else can come after that. Because um, those are the most important documents. And for you, you you gotta know if there's a problem after you go through those documents. You know, you gotta know if there's a problem. With it. Got it. And because because the um the problem would be there. Like those those are the main documents. The problems that'd be there. Mm -hmm. Then you'll know. Then you'll know whether or not you need to go through the rest of the documents. Wow. From lenders, they'll put those in the back, and then it's like, I'm not gonna go through the entire packet. Imagine the problem oh. on page two hundred. You know, so be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that nah, it, that's what it's about. It's about working smarter, and you definitely could do that in half an hour. You know, but my average is a half an hour. Yeah, my average is a half an hour at most. You know, you can not out longest part for me is really trying out that ID information. Everything is okay. Everything else. And stamp, well, you, you stamp it before. I kind of like that idea too, to be honest, you know, for just be mindful of the date. So like, if you're doing it the day before, remember when you date it, you date it for whatever date. The file, yeah, you date it for the date that you're, uh, right, right. And then what about your, your book? Do you have your book with you or you do? You talking about the notary, the notary book? Mm -hmm. Well, I use a, I use an app. Um, oh, it's digital. Okay. I, have them, I, I think you could have them cited if you would. They could, sell, okay. they could sign in on your phone. True. Or most times I just scan it. I just take a picture. Of, I just take a picture of the ID. And mm -hmm. I can scan it because it just scan the back of the barcode in the back of the ID. Oh. And it automatically pulls in all of their information to the app. Can you, can you, you can send that to me? I'm going to download it on my phone too. Because I was, I just bought a book from Staples for like 10, 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. And man, I hate it, man. I was like, this is, it's like very small boxes. There's a lot that you got to put down. 
And I was like, it has to be a more electronic way to do this. But I don't know if the state accepts electronic. I just feel like as long as it's documented, that's what really matters. I think I think with the app initially when they give, when they ask you a few questions, they ask you what state you're in, and it, it'll let you know if it's okay. I think I remember doing something with Gata actually in the sign up for it. like when you like register in the app. Yeah, she was was stated. Yeah, you know that you know whether or not it's by it, but I think the, the, it's legal or not. Yes, yeah, it's legal or not. But I think it really is for your own record, little mom. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You just never know. Like, listen, I, I, you know, I signed with such and such two years ago at nine thirty, and this was the name. Right. That's pretty much it. And the cool thing with the app is that it'll it'll, it'll take a stamp of the location too. So like, it'll take a Ooh. take a map of where exactly where you were during the signing. So it'll just wow. extract that. So it'll, it'll, it'll take like a Google Map picture and put it in. So mm -hmm. it, it, Get out of here! Wow, because it takes you know it gets it from your phone, so it just put it. And then you can say, well, I was here at this location. Oh, this is the map that at this time. Right. See. Right. Right. That's sick. It's the best. Yeah. 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 For sure. You yeah. guys though. I mean, it, like I said, it ain't, it ain't, it's going to take some time, but it's not, it's not impossible is what I mean. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, and then, and then in terms of the, the, mo the, the, Remote notary, are you getting any business that right there now or yes, yeah, so not really? I am. So I have one client that's giving me a lot of business through the remote um notarization. Um because they have a client that's in Pennsylvania that okay. I do a lot of close for him. And it's all remote. Oh. Yes. Oh. You do the same thing that you're doing here, but just remote. Wow, that's sick. How did you get that client though? It's just, it's it's one of my existing clients. Um, oh, they, had, well, they, admitted, they had a, they had a client that only wanted to do online notarization. Really? They called me, it's like, can you do it? And I've been going there for him. So like, like, of course, two, three times a month, I'll meet with him. He's like, not bad, right? Yeah. He's a, he's a real estate investor. He's like an investor. I don't really feel well, well, I think in New York, we only allow, are, are we still allowed to charge the same fees? The, the 200? So I don't charge them a site or anything. I charge them a client. So your client. Right. Got it. So it doesn't, whatever you charge it, whatever you agree with, just apply it. True, true, true. But if you sign, that makes sense. Like the signer, yeah, if you do it, if you're doing motorization for the signer directly, like if you do a general motorization, that. Yeah, it's $25 in New York, man. Yeah, that ain't really no money, but. You gotta do like, I mean, the house of the day. You gotta do a lot of them. Yeah, man. To the and, 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 and as you know, like these, these platforms are not free, bro. No. Like you gotta pay for these platforms. You tell me. Some monthly, some, some yearly. And some per transaction. I've been doing a lot of research on it. So notarize. Well, they they're not notarizing anymore. They're called um. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I use notary. Mm -hmm. They yeah, they charge per transaction. And then that is another one that I was uh just just working with. Uh, and it's good. I like the platform. I did a video thing, a uh, uh, tour with them, and everything. It's called uh, Sinex. Sinex is cool. Yeah, yeah. Sinex is cool. It's, it's platform is real easy to use. But I think they want like 300 bucks a year. Something like that. It's like 25 bucks a month or something. What's small? So, I mean, it is small, but if the business ain't there, it's an investment, man. I need to be able to make triple that, man. Like, yeah. So that's just my biggest thing is like, I could do this, but how am I going to promote myself for, for more? I mean, for, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. Like, Instagram, Facebook, and all that is cool. LinkedIn. Yeah, a lot of people, like, a lot of people do general notarization work to run. So, like, people need to do like, their passport or chill and stuff like that. The run, the run is, yeah. I need to, I need to get a client that all they do is general notary, mm -hmm. like, for their, I guess, customers. And then I work with them, something like that. You'd probably be better off connecting with, like, attorneys, right? But attorneys can notarize, though. Attorneys can notarize, but if they... But not their own... Oh, true, true, they, true. They, can not, they don't really notarize it. They have, their stamp is almost as valid as a notarization. Attorney... Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Their attorney stamp is almost like 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 a bank will honor it because they're an attorney. True. And remember, they can't notarize... It's a conflict of interest. They can't notarize their own loans, right? They can, I mean, their own closing. They said, well, they... Can they... Because wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? Like, 
we can't we can't notarize our own documents. We can't notarize our own documents, but attorney attorneys can notarize their own documents, but they can notarize their clients. their clients' documents that they closed on. Because we can't notarize a document that we closed on, right? <laughs> like, like if you close on a property, you can't notarize. I can't do my own loan signing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know if it's the same. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. But what I'm gonna do is um. So, so what's our next steps? What you thinking? So, the next steps is, um, you got your E&O, right? You know? Insurance? No. How do I get that? Well, mm-hmm. I mean, okay. I, re- I remember we spoke last time. You said, if I was doing anything with you, then I don't got to worry about it. Obvious. Yeah, because I have to get me out. Okay, cool. If you do anything on your own. For sure. They're going to want you to act. Like, how much is that? Oh, that's not good. Yeah, but it, and where I get it from? Um, there's a lot of companies that do it, but you get it. To National me. Notary, I think you can get it through the NNA, but they didn't have. I, I needed a million dollar policy. They didn't have that, so I used another company. Uh, so, you know, I forgot the price. Oh, a hundred and something bucks a year. That's not bad at all. No, for the whole year, it covers you. Like if you make a mistake from a dime, so much. Of course, sue you for it. And Let me. Yeah, I'm gonna um, write that now. I'm gonna work on that also because that's 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 like. Like uh, so, E and O insurance errors in omission. E and O insurance and um, so E and O insurance. All right, cool. Yes. And in terms of like um, any work that you got, you got any signings coming up, or you get them by the day? I get them as they come. So sometimes I get stuff a week ahead of time. True. Sure. Sometimes they come in all in on a day. You know, the same day, the same day. So it's it's tough to like project. Of course, of course. But you said is is you doing like two a week maybe for me right now personally I do more yeah do, do about two to five two to five a week me personally that's good but nah that's good yeah but I'm I'm trying to transition out of me doing it and get so I guess of course of course that's the only reason because I'm trying to like spend and free up your time too yeah well, I don't care about my time I just want to I just want to ex- I just want to grow as far as like all into new markets like I'm getting a lot of the market and at, at, at PA. I want to get to New York. Okay. Now that you, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Also, you want to just go in a different market and just get residual. One to try state and then I want to like expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's what's up. And then you and then you'll just be able to just you just sit back and refer. That's it. Refer people. Yeah. Refer people. Yeah, I want to get a scheduler from the team so there's all the scheduling. Oh, so now you just manage the scheduler. I manage the scheduler. Um I'll um you have a scheduler and then I'll just have like a team. I want to get try to try to figure out how to get a sales team. I'm just trying to Oh, okay. I hear you, man. I hear you. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to really work with you for some time. And I also want to try to, you know, build something where I could get a direct client as well. Oh yeah. That's the you know that's the goal. But that's where the money yeah. is. You have to get direct client. Like get a direct if, client. If you work with people like Side me, I'll be considered like a signing service. Of course, so of course. So like, if you work with signing services, of course they get it. They get the chunk and then they they transfer down. But but that will right. You should be go direct. Yeah, go direct. Right. Yeah, and get some consistent business every single day if I could from somewhere, you know. And then there's something else that we d- we you could do called apostles. I was looking on the New York uh, mm. the Department of State website. You know, being that you're already a notary, like just kind of take it all away so that you don't, you don't, you, you can kind of be a full service person. You know what I mean? So it's a lot. It's a big business, man. You know, but it's a lot of work, you know, but, but, you know, but thanks. Hey, you keep me posted, man. You got my information and, um, and I'm gonna look out for that. Let me, and let, and send me that, uh, it's the notary app. Send me that because that's important. I'm gonna go online and see if I could download that app and if there anything that come up in new york or even you know if it's if it's upstate in orange county then cool even if it's in rockland if i got enough time i'll go to it you know what i'm saying like i'll, I'll add you to the my schedule and the schedule platform i use on snap docs so it's not okay i'll add you to it and then um okay I think once i add you to it they'll send you a section login stuff so you can log into it and okay and then if i have anything there and you'll get ping on about it all right, so you, all right, cool. I'll look out for it, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Anytime, brother. You be safe, man, and um, I'm going to see you soon. All right, man. Take it easy. All right. All right.